APP modified bitumen membranes came to the United States from Europe in the late 1970s. So the technology and installation methods have been around in our industry for over 30 years. But if installing APP membranes is new to you, then you should be aware of some basic safety information before getting started. 1. Do not install APP torch grade membranes without careful review and implementation of all applicable safety and fire watch requirements. 2. Familiarize yourself with the propane gas equipment handling and storage guidelines and worker safety precautions and training. 3. You must remember that installation of a roof system is a construction process, and as with any construction process, safety is a key element. Therefore, U.S. Ply recommends that all applicable safety standards and good roofing practices be followed. 4. Fire prevention is your responsibility. Remove any and all potentially flammable articles from the work area and ensure good roofing practices are being followed. For more information, visit www.usply.com to download product data sheets and review all information concerning torch safety and application techniques found in the USP 160 specification manual. Step 1. Preparation The surface over which the membrane is to be installed must be clean, smooth, dry, and prepared in accordance with the USP 160 specification manual. Suitable torching substrates are prime structural concrete, self-adhered, mechanically fastened, or asphalt-adhered base sheets or ply sheets, and gypsum cover boards such as Densdeck Prime or Secure Rock. Substrates that are not suitable for torching are insulation boards such as polyisocyanurate, perlite or wood fiber, fresh asphalt glazes or flood coats, areas with solvent-based cold adhesives or mastics, or any other flammable substrate such as wood, plywood, or oriented strand board. APP membranes must not be applied during adverse weather or without precautionary measures in temperatures below 45 degrees Fahrenheit. You should also reference the cold weather precautions section of the USP 160 specification manual. For slopes less than 3 inches per foot, install cap sheet perpendicular to the slope. For slopes 3 inches per foot and over, APP torch grade membranes should run vertically or parallel to the roof slope. All laps must be parallel or perpendicular to the slope of the roof so that water is never running against the lap edge. Step 2. Using the propane torch. Closely read, understand, and follow all information in the torch equipment operation manual for safe torch ignition. Only proceed after verifying that the torch equipment is properly connected and that the hoses are in good working condition. Check all fittings and other equipment for leakage by using soapy water to detect gas leaks. Never use a flame to check fittings or other equipment for leaks. When igniting the torch, make sure the torch valve is open to its lowest possible setting and the trigger is not engaged while older models require the use of a spark striker. The striker must be held at a safe distance in front of the torch head. Step 3. Roll Alignment After removing the tape from the roll, the coiled membrane must be unrolled approximately 10 feet, aligned, and then re-rolled to apply. When working on a slope or an even substrate, unroll the membrane completely and allow time to relax to work out any wrinkles that would cause misalignment or cause the membrane to curve down slope. This can be accomplished by having one person stand on one end of the roll while another person shifts the membrane at the other end from side to side to help the membrane lay flat and align properly without wrinkles. Membranes should be overlapped 3 inches on the sides and 6 inches on the ends. End laps must be staggered from adjacent end laps at a minimum of 18 inches apart so that no adjacent end laps coincide. Once proper alignment is achieved, Back roll the membrane so that the roll remains tight without forming a cone when re-rolling. Step 4. Installing the membrane. When a torch welding technique is used, the propane torch flame should be applied uniformly across the exposed underside surface of the membrane and lap areas until the compound reaches the proper application temperature. 
The best visual indicator for the proper temperature is when the compound develops a slight sheen. If the membrane produces a heavy smoke, this means too much heat is being applied. Be sure that the burn-off film is completely burned off where present on the underside of rolls, membrane selvage edges, or both surfaces as applicable. In optimum conditions, move the flame from side to side in the shape of an L, applying about 80% of the heat to the membrane and 20% to the substrate. In colder temperatures, more heat may be necessary on the substrate by applying 60% of the heat to the membrane and 40% of the heat to the substrate. Also, a slower pace may be required to ensure that proper heating is accomplished. For best results when torching, start at the lap side, position 1, and work across the roll to position 2. Then extend the torch so that the flame is at position 3, which is at the juncture of the substrate and the roll as the torch is moved from the far end of the roll back towards position 4 at the starting lap side. Then move the torch to position 5, out away from the roll and along the lap area, and finally back down the lap area to position 6. When complete, re-roll the opposite end of the membrane and install in the same manner. Step 5. Obtaining Compound Flow Out As the membrane is heated, Slowly unroll as the torch returns to the lap side, or position 6, and continue repeating this cycle to ensure proper adhesion. A minimum of 3 eighths of an inch compound flowout must be obtained at all seam areas. To ensure the proper 3 eighths of an inch of compound at the lap seam areas, a weighted roller may be used. Roller application should follow behind the torch no less than 3 feet, and no more than four feet away to ensure that the membrane will be at the proper temperature to produce the proper flow out. Walking in the seam is also acceptable. Do not exceed a maximum of one inch compound flow out as this indicates overheating. Step six, troweling a seam. Check all seams for full and uniform adhesion. Dry laps are not acceptable. Unadhered areas or dry laps must be lifted with a heated trowel and resealed by lightly torching the seam area. Press or roll seam to achieve a minimum of 3 8 of an inch compound flowout of bitumen. If on a mineral surface, do not attempt to move the trowel laterally while applying pressure as the granules may become displaced. Direct pressure or light padding action is best. Step seven, end laps. When forming an end lap, Make sure that there is sufficient material to form it. A minimum of 6 inches is required. First, cut the corner of the underlying membrane at a 45 degree angle to prevent a buildup of excess material at the adjacent lap intersection. Next, laps and other seams formed over granulated surfaces require preheating of the top surface of the underlying granulated surface membrane. Heat the top side of this membrane to a point where the granules just begin to sink in and the bitumen compound comes up between the granules, ensuring proper seam construction and adhesion. Then, heat the underside of the top membrane thoroughly to properly mate the two sheets together. Press or roll into place to achieve required compound flow out. If end laps fall in line or are not staggered the proper distance, a full width of APP membrane must be installed over the end laps. All side and end laps must be staggered from underlying plies. Step 8. Granule Application Matching granules may be broadcast into the modified bitumen bleedout at the seams and overlaps while flowout is still hot. This is not required for issuance of a USP160 roof system limited warranty, but it will give your roof an enhanced professional finished appearance. This now completes your membrane installation. For more information and other training demonstrations, please visit us at www.usply.com.